Okay, back to the wing spars. I've uh, laid out all of the wing station, or excuse me, wing rib stations called for in the plans. So after you get the parts blank cut out, and you look at the plans, you can see that they have uh, station numbers located at various points along the assembly of the wing spar. So uh, what I've done is uh, I, I've laid those out on each spar blank. <clears throat> And I still have to cut off the angles up here. The root of the wing is station zero. So your reference measurements all come off of sta station zero. And then as you move down the line, you've got station 280, station 960. Uh, everywhere where there's a uh, wing rib is a station location. And then in addition to that, you've got various rivet lines um, that are taken off these measurements from the station locations. So your station locations become additional reference lines, and then you measure additional uh, rivet lines and other locations off of those. And furthermore, there's a section in the plan called Section A, or Section AA rather, and that details where some reinforcing L angles go along the wing section. You can see that Section AA right there in the center. Uh, that's where there's no rib that goes there, but there is some reinforcing angle that goes there. So I've essentially drawn out on these rib blanks exactly what uh, how section A is labeled in the plans and I furthermore marked my lightning holes. Now the plans call for a 95 millimeter hole which is uh, if you change it to SAE is basically a 3.75 inch or 3 and 3 quarter inch hole so I've marked the diameter of the hole uh, in addition to marking the radius which is an inch and 7 eighths and the reason I did that is when you're setting up a fly cutter uh, which is an adjustable circle cutter, uh, it's easier to measure off of the radius than it is the diameter because it's a bar that slides back and forth and I'll show you. Okay so this is my fly cutter here so you have a uh, pilot hole which is a one quarter inch um, pilot drill and then this arm right here with the cutter on the bottom of it. So I found for me that it's easiest to simply measure from the very center, center of the uh, um, arbor here out to the very edge of the circle cutter blade uh, to get my, my dimension for my hole. And just because I wanted to be extra careful, I didn't want to end up measuring 3.75 inches and then having a 7.5 inch diameter hole, although that'd be pretty obvious and you'd think it, that's kind of a silly precaution to take. But by putting both the diameter of the hole so I know how large the hole has to be, and then the radius of the hole so that I know exactly where to set my uh, hole cutter or hole saw, circle cutter, whatever you want to call it. Um, it just minimizes any chance for error on my part while I'm going through and cutting these. Again, it's a, the wing spars are a very expensive piece of material and it's the most important part of the plane in my opinion. So I want to make sure that I'm double checking myself and making sure that none of the none of the opportunities for errors or waste uh, come up as much as I can. So that's it on the dimensions and the, the circle cutter. So back here on the wing you can see I've gone down and marked every one, or on the wing spire I've marked every single one of these. The first thing I had to do was mark a uh, center line along the length of each wing spire web and then on the original detail drawing for that particular part blank it gives us locations of the lightning holes uh, from the edge of each spar. And one thing you have to be careful of, again it's kind of a silly thing it may seem like, but you're making a mirror image of a lot of these parts. You have a right-handed version and a left-handed version and it's easy to kind of get caught up in what you're doing and make two of the same identical part without actually making the mirror image. So instead of making one right-handed and one left-handed part, you actually make two left-handed parts. Now fortunately on the wing spars, at least for the blank is concerned, if you had done that uh, to cutting simply the flat blank before you put any holes in it or any, any of the measurements on it, that wouldn't be a problem because you could flip it, simply just flip it over and use it as the left-handed part. Um, and in fact, that's I think what I did at least when I was cutting them lengthwise. But once you start getting into cutting ends off 
and then putting your holes in, your holes have to flange a specific direction, and then of course all of your measurements are taken off of uh, specific station locations, and so then your right and left handedness becomes uh, more crucial. When you're making a formed part, like a wing rib, there's really only one way to make a, a proper left-handed rib and a right-handed rib and that and that becomes obvious but of course a wing rib is made out of much less material than a spar and if you make a scrap one oh well you can make another part out of it if I have to scrap this entire piece of spar because I did it wrong either flange the holes the wrong way or put the L angles on the wrong way or cut the wrong end off in a specific spot I'm out this piece of material and sure I could probably salvage some of it but this thing is going to end up looking a lot like Swiss cheese before we start putting rivets in it and so there really won't be a lot of salvageable material once you start drilling holes and really assembling this piece. So more on that later I'm not sure when I'm going to get to this particular structure I've got lots of other things to do in the meantime but we'll put it together and hopefully show you a good video on assembling the wing spar itself once I get the other parts formed. Thanks for watching.